So in this video, we're gonna give you nine of our best tips to get the most out of the battery life in your iPad. And stick around to the end of the video because they're gonna give you a pro tip, so an additional one, 10 tips in total, if you're counting, on how to make sure you can secure that your iPad is gonna give you the most battery life possible. Let's get started. So the first tip we're going to offer up is it has to do with your brightness. It has to do with your screen. That's probably one of the things that eats up the battery the most on these devices. Screen conducts a lot of energy and a lot of power and it takes up a lot of battery life. So adjusting your brightness on the screen can go a long way in making sure that you have a really good battery life. Now screen brightness wise, if you want to adjust it manually, that's really easy. You just swipe down from the top, you go into your action center and you have your screen brightness adjusting here. So somewhere around the middle is always going to be good for battery life, but I like to go a little bit bit above the top that way I can make other adjustments in the iPad to kind of make sure I have my best screen capabilities and still have a really good battery life. Another option is you can turn on auto brightness. Now Apple's kind of hidden the auto brightness feature in a couple of different menus. So if you go to settings and then you're going to tap accessibility and next you're going to tap display and text and at the bottom you have your auto brightness setting here. You can switch that off or on. For battery purposes you definitely want to have it on and what this basically does is just adjust the brightness of your screen based on the area that you're in. So if you're in an area with a bunch of light, it's gonna lower the brightness of the screen. If you're in an area that you need more light, it's gonna raise the brightness of the screen. And believe it or not, this can help you save some battery life itself because it's just adjusting the ambient light of your screen based on your surroundings. So you don't have to keep your screen too high. You don't have to keep your screen too low. You can be right in the middle and the other brightness will do the rest. So the next one we're gonna take a look at is connections. And the theme of this entire video is gonna be turning stuff off. The more stuff you have off, the more battery life you save. So the trick is to kind of find out what you can turn off that you don't really use that much that you may think you use that's going to end up saving you some battery life. Connections is probably one of the first places you want to start shutting stuff off. And when I'm talking about connections, I'm talking about like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, AirDrop, all these things that are on by default that you may not be using. If you're out and about and you're not connecting to a Wi-Fi signal, you're not going to be using your Wi-Fi so you can turn that off. If you're not having any kind of Bluetooth connections like an Apple Pencil or some headphones, you can turn your Bluetooth off. And if you're not airdropping anything by default I always think you should kind of turn your airdrop off because you don't want an open line of connection into your iPad anyway so just go ahead and shut that off unless you're airdropping something then you power it on and then you turn it back off when you're done and keeping in theme with connections the next thing we want to take a look at is your location based services it's going to be found in these settings privacy and location services there so what location services basically is is each application kind of pulls where your location is some apps are location dependent it, like uh, your maps or anything that requires you to be geotagged is location dependent, but some apps aren't. So the location services really doesn't need to be on for every single application you have in your iPad. You can do a mass turn off just by hitting the green button at top, turns off everything. No location is gonna be tracked by any apps. Maybe you're really private. You don't want your location tracked anyway, so you can go ahead and power that off. Or if you don't mind some people knowing where you are, you can go ahead and independently turn off location based on the app itself. Now again, just remember the more locations you turn off, the less applications are running processes in the background and the less battery life those applications are going to use. So it does serve the fact that you can turn everything off and just turn everything on one by one or turn a couple of them off. Any little bit helps when it comes to preserving as much battery as possible. Sticking with apps, we're going to go with the background app refresh. That's again in your settings and there's a background app refresh option there. This is also similar to the location based services. It's something that's running in the background. So whenever an application is installed in your iPad, it basically requires permission to do stuff in the background like pull down information update itself get updated information all that stuff that's happening behind the scenes when you don't have the application open background app refreshes is almost like the app actually running in the background while you're doing something else so you're actually multitasking without even knowing it and this can actually eat up a ton of battery if you have a ton of applications running at the same time in the background just imagine running like 30 apps on your ipad at the same time while you're watching a video or while you're sending an email or something of that nature. So turning off the background app refresh actually helps save a lot of battery. This is an option that a lot of people don't look at because you kind of just download apps into your iPad without worrying about what's going on in the background. Go into this option here, go through the application
notifications that you know probably don't need to be updating in the background anyway and start starting stuff off and you realize that you'll start getting a lot more battery life on your iPad because it's just doing a lot less in the background and you don't really have to worry because as soon as you open those applications they're going to refresh anyway it takes a couple of seconds if you're on a pretty strong connection you're not going to see the difference so I would just go in shut them off and if you notice any difference to start turning them on one by one that's probably going to be your best bet and kind of weeding out which applications need the background app refresh versus which applications don't need it still in your general settings you're going to probably want to turn off the airplay and handoff feature if you don't know what the airplay and handoff feature is it's just basically the apple ecosystem at work this is your ability to hand off things that you're doing on your ipad to your computer so basically if you're starting an email on your ipad you can continue it on your mac if you're starting call or text on your ipad you can hand it off to your mac to continue that whole apple ecosystem where everything kind of talks to each other but one if you don't have another apple product and this is your only apple product you don't need the service on because it's sucking your battery in the background and two if you haven't used it by now you're probably never going to use it so go ahead and shut it off to save a little bit of extra battery life i know it's a really cool feature but again it's a really cool feature if you use it continuously if you don't even know it exists if it's the first time you're hearing about it you probably want to go in and just shut it off because you're not going to use it and it does eat a battery in the background so also in your settings if you look at your side panel there's an option called itunes and app store if you go in there what this section is is the auto downloads option for your ipad and it's exactly what it sounds like it's going to auto download any updates to applications to books apps itself and music so you can go ahead and shut some of these options off as well anything that's happening automatically without your knowledge can end up draining your battery and some of these downloads can be pretty big and the larger the download the more battery it consumes so you probably want to do everything manually anyway if you're good at updating your apps or if you're always in the app store anyway you can just check for updates manually and not have to worry about your ipad doing anything in the background if you want to keep one or two of these on it's not going to kill you it's not going to be the worst thing in the world but if you're looking to conserve and save as much battery as possible shut them all off now i know throughout the video i've been saying anything that the ipad does manually is a bad thing but this is actually a good thing and that's your auto lock feature so if you go into your settings you go to display and brightness in that menu there's an auto lock option here and the auto lock option is basically what it is if the ipad remains inactive for two minutes it's going to automatically lock your screen you can adjust the time frame from two minutes to never just remember the higher the time frame goes the more your screen time is going to be and the more screen time you have the lower your battery performance is going to be throughout the day so two minutes seems like a really nice sweet spot for most people if you're not using your ipad for two minutes then it should probably go off now bear in mind that there's some caveats to this like if you're doing something on screen most of the time the ipad is going to know that you're watching a video or you're listening to something that's on screen or reading a book something that has to remain on screen that you may not be interacting with too much it's a little bit smart enough to recognize that so it won't be shutting off in the middle of a youtube video like this one or anything else that may require you not to be inactive but the screen is active but if it's just sitting there on the display such as this it's going to start to dim and after two minutes it shuts off and it ends up saving you some battery if you forget to hit that power button now for me this next one is a no-brainer it's a freaking ipad it doesn't need anything for fitness and motion so if you go into your privacy settings in your settings there's a fitness and motion option here and this is basically a fitness tracker on the ipad i don't know anyone who's jogging with the ipad maybe there's a couple of ipad joggers out there comment down below if you're an ipad jogger but if you're not doing any kind of fitness things or you're not moving around or tracking your ipad you probably have your phone anyway that's doing that or an apple watch or something that's tracking your fitness you don't need your ipad to track your fitness and tracking your fitness drains your battery so you want to shut that off because again it's probably not an option you use or care to use too much shut it off save some battery life fitness tracking on an ipad i guess you just kind of threw it in there because so the next one's a little bit of common sense. It's just closing out applications. It's really that simple. If you have a bunch of applications open, you have a bunch of applications running and you have a bunch of applications that are sucking the power of your iPad itself. I know it's a lot easier to just to jump from application to application and you know, without a home button or without an actual X to close out applications, sometimes we just open new applications and we never really close out the applications that are currently open. But you have to remember sometimes to just swipe 
swipe up and close out some applications because if you have 10 to 15 apps just running on your iPad, that's going to be sucking some battery power out of your iPad itself. So make sure you close out applications you're no longer using and reopen them as needed. So the next one is something I'm extremely guilty of and I think a lot of people are and that's having so many tabs open either in Safari, Chrome or the browser of your choice. Tabs take up processing power and they take up battery life. The more tabs you have open in your browser, the more things it kind of has to keep track of, the more processing power your iPad is actually using. And when that processor is running, your battery is running to really accommodate that processor. So I know you're not probably going to shut down all your tabs, but try to limit the amount of tabs that you actually have open in your browser. You'd be surprised how much battery life you can end up saving just by kind of monitoring the tabs that you open and close. I like to keep mine to like maybe five or 10, not 20 or 30 more tabs equals more processing power, which equals more battery life. It's a really simple hack that you can use to save some battery on your iPad. And now we're in pro tip mode. See, I'm like a big proponent of numbers. I like statistics. I like seeing the numbers that affect certain things that I use. So in this area of your iPad, you can actually get a lot of information on what's really sucking your battery. You don't have to guess. You kind of know exactly what's killing the battery in your iPad itself. If you go into your settings, you go on the little side panel you have here, you have a battery option. You tap that battery option and it's going to give you a breakdown of the application that used the most battery within 24 hours, but you can go back as far as 10 days to kind of see a breakdown of what's using the most battery. And if you tap that particular application, it'll give you exactly how much screen on time, how much minutes it's running in the background, everything that's basically doing to sell the battery life out of your iPad and then you can make a decision from there either to not use that application too much, turn off the background app, refresh on that specific application, just kind of get an idea of how much screen on time that you're using and what you can do and adjustments you can make if you find that your battery is just not lasting as long as it should or lasting as long as you want it to last between charges. This area will give you a lot of information that you can use to make just little adjustments to how you use your iPad to get the most out of your battery. So make sure you follow these tips to make sure your iPad battery lasts you a little bit longer. You'll notice the difference. Trust me, go through the video, make the changes in your iPad and you should be good to go until then. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap that subscribe button down below. While you're at it, just to the side of it, tap that bell for notification so you don't miss and release some cool, helpful content like this one. Until then guys, we did an iPhone quiz video that kind of gives you an idea of which iPhone is best for you. I'm gonna put that video up there. You can click on that, check that out now. Or below that, there's gonna be another video that YouTube believes you'd enjoy. Go ahead and click on that and check that out as well. Thanks so much for checking out the video again. And until next time, peace.